On this episode of This Is Game Boy Light, Kung Fu lives in everything we do. It lives in how we put on a jacket and how we take off a jacket. It lives in how we treat people. Everything is Kung Fu. Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode of This Is Game Boy Light, and this time with me, Mule, as uh, the sole host. So yeah, uh, like always for these light episodes, it's only one of us doing them, so this time it was my turn, so here we go. Um, you might wonder, what in the world was that quote that just happened before the episode started? It's actually a quote from uh, Jackie Chan, and um, why I pick that will become very apparent uh, after this intro bit. Um, it, it will make more sense, for sure. Uh, but yeah, first let's uh, talk a little bit up, uh, about what I have been up to. Um, not that much um, when it's like in the time between our last recording and this one, like the, the three-year uh, anniversary episode. So I've been playing some more Sekiro. I think I'm almost at the end of it, uh, but I am stuck on a boss though, but I only tried for like half an hour and then I started playing another game, so I have to get back into it, but, I, but I'm getting close to the end, and then I have to replay it two more times, I think, to unlock everything I can unlock, uh, but yeah, still fun game, hard as it should be, uh, but it's, it's definitely overcomable, so, uh, people who are afraid of these from software games. You can do it. It's really not that bad as people make it out to be. Is it hard? Yes, but it's it's definitely always doable. Um, I have been playing One Piece World Seeker though, uh, the PS4 version. I don't know on which other consoles it's out. I think it's out on PC as well, at least. Um, it. I think it took me like 24 hours to complete the game, so I got uh, all the achievements and things like that. Uh, not for the DLCs though, I didn't buy those because, in my opinion, it is definitely not worth it. I do not want to play more of the game and definitely not at the price range those uh, DLC parts go for. Um, like, I haven't played that many One Piece games, like I'm a huge One Piece fan and, and this is just like a standalone story i think it takes place after the dress rosa arc for people who are uh, actually following the following the anime or, or reading the manga I, I think it takes place uh right after that at least um yeah this one is i think the first like open world one piece game so that caught my interest uh but i didn't see that many great reviews about it so i just never got to it and, and then I got my hands on a copy of this game for free basically so I decided to play it and yeah it, it's it's not great it's not bad at all but it's just very uh tough. well it is straightforward for an open world game which is really good in my opinion because I don't really like open world games that much but um there's just not much to do, it's always the same, and the battle system is this very same -y. Like, you would expect boss fights to be a little bit heavier focused on, on your abilities and things like that, but it's totally not. It's it's like very same -y all the way throughout the game. But if you're looking for like a, a short One Piece game and, and you really like uh, the entire world that that anime or manga has set up, um, Take a look at it if you can find it for cheap, like for 10 bucks, 20 bucks maybe maximum. Or wait for uh, like a Game of the Year edition or Ultimate Edition that will probably come out sometime uh, when you get the DLCs as well uh, for a better price than, than what you have to pay for now. Um, if I can recommend the One Piece game, the Game Boy Advance one is really good and the first three... Uh, One Piece Pirate Warrior games are really good, but those are like Dynasty Warrior games if you're not into those Like you will probably not like playing them either, but uh, the Game Boy Advance one is pretty cool It's like uh, a beat-em-up platformer kind of game, so 
definitely check that one out if you haven't done so. But yeah, that's pretty much all I've been playing. Uh, I, I haven't been doing much. Um, there is this secret project me and EBC are doing, so I have played something for that. More on that will be announced very shortly for sure. Um, but yeah, besides that, no games, uh, just some reading, some more Stephen King novels for me. Um, and that's that's pretty much it, actually. So yeah, with that being said, let's dive into uh, the game of this week. Kung Fu Master, or also known as Spartan X in Japan. Let's go. Alright, welcome back everybody. Let's take a deeper look or a closer look at uh, Spartan X or Kung Fu Master for Game Boy. So this game came out in Japan on the 12th of November in 1990 under the Spartan X name of course. Uh, and then it got released in the US in February 1991 and in Europe in 1991. We, we never know uh, an exact month for that weirdly enough but yeah it's it's all around the same time basically only a few months apart um this game was developed and published by irem um you know me i i just love irem games and this is definitely another one that i really really enjoy um even though it doesn't offer that much which we will uh, dive into very shortly for sure uh but yeah just completely made by Irem. Um, even the composer is credited as Irem Sound Team. So not really one specific person, but just a few people working uh, on a lot of Irem games. Uh, I did find the names of the people who were or are still... Well, no, Irem is, is defunct. So that were in the Irem Sound Team. And uh, they were Ikuko Mimori. Masato Ishizaki, Hiroshi Kimura, and Masahiko Ishida. So um, either one or multiple people were responsible for making the soundtrack for this game. And if you are wondering what kind of a game this is, this is actually a quote-unquote beat-em-up. Um, yeah, most people will probably definitely know the NES version, Kung Fu Master, I think it's also called. Uh, the very linear walk left, walk right, walk left, walk right, walk left again, uh, where you just go up a pagoda, I believe, uh, floor to floor, uh, you face up against an endless spawn of enemies coming at your way, which you can uh, either kick or punch. Um, and then you make it to the boss and you go up a floor and that's it. It's like a very simple game for sure, but it's also just based on the arcade game, uh, which was called Spartan X. And um, Spartan X was actually based on or inspired by the Jackie Chan movie Meals on Wheels. Um, I think that's the translation though. I think the movie is actually called Spartan X in, uh, in Japan. But uh, yeah, that's where that quote came from like it doesn't come from that movie it was just a random jackie chan quote that i found uh but yeah that, that's basically what the entire premise is based on um that actually arcade game got a lot of ports of course because uh everybody knows the nes one but there has been uh a lot of different ones on, on other home consoles as well. So this is actually a sequel. Um, I know if you try to find any information about Kung Fu Master for Game Boy, they all say it's a port of the arcade version. It is not. It, it is actually a sequel to the game. Um, and from what I could gather, this might be the plot. Uh, I found it on a random website that I was gonna put in my notes and then I lost it so I don't remember what I searched for when I found it but apparently uh, this comes from the manual um, so in the first game uh, your character is named Thomas that's all I know so this should be in the Game Boy manual which sadly we don't have a scan of um, so here we go uh, Thomas now a secret intelligent agent investigates the disappearance of scientists and engineers known in the field of weapon development and the apparent involvement of mysterious millionaire and martial artist Zap Morgan now Thomas has to face Morgan's contracted killers like Chainsaw Man, Napalm Bomber, the Twin Ninjas and the Strongman 
So apparently that that's what the manual says. I hope I can verify that one day, but sadly at this point in time we, we just don't have a scan yet of it. Uh, if you have the manual, please provide us with a scan. You can always submit it to, uh, I think it's GameboyManuals.com or is it GBManuals.com? Let me check. Uh, I actually don't know. Well, it's on Sprinting Lexus site, so SprintingLegs.com, you can, you can find the link that points you towards where you can submit those. So yeah, pretty simple plot. Uh, I, the first one I know, it's like Mr. X has kidnapped your girlfriend Sylvia and you have to save her. Apparently there you were still just being a martial artist, a kung fu master, but in this one you are actually part of a secret intelligence agency. Um, and I think that goes further into like X2 or Spartan X2 on NES, uh, which is a completely different game, uh, but it, it, it is another sequel. So it, that would be the third game in the series. Uh, but yeah, this is the second one. So you're just still a, still a normal kind of martial artist, but uh, you do work for a secret intelligence agency apparently. So yeah, let's dive into the gameplay a bit. Um, it's pretty simple if you've ever played the uh, NES version or one of the other versions, um, there's not much to it. It's still the same principle. You just walk from left to right in this case. Um, an endless spawn of enemies comes at you until you reach the boss, you defeat the boss and you move on to the next stage. Like super simple, There, there's not much to it. Um, this game, however, introduces some platforming in later stages and uh, environmental hazards, something you did not see in uh, in the original game. Um, so yeah, it, it does change up the formula a little bit, builds upon the base that it had in the, in the first game, uh, but from a baseline perspective, it, it's it's basically still the same game, but with with some uh, new enemies and new tricks up its sleeve. So when it comes to the controls, it's very simple. The directional path moves you either left or right. Um, the up button will make you jump. The A button does a kick and the B button does a punch attack. Uh, there is, however, a bomb you can pick up that gets dropped by certain enemies that you can use while pressing the B button. It will show up in your quote unquote inventory at the top of the screen when you have it so you know that you can use it. Um, there's also a new move that you can use, which is basically a backward somersault kick. And it kind of works weird, but it's like by you do it by kicking while jumping, but it, it has a very specific input for it. So what you usually end up doing is you can just do a jump punch or a jump kick. And sometimes when you're jump kicking, you might press kick more than once because uh, you like spamming the button. And then you suddenly do that somersault kick flying backwards while uh, while kicking everything around you. Uh, maybe the manual says how to actually properly do it. I never figured it out. Uh, I just know I can do it by, by spamming the kick button. So um, is it useful? Not that much, to be honest. So you're, you're better off not using it, but it's cool to see. So might as well try it out for sure. Um, the game does offer a variety of pickups as well. Um, most enemies drop these kind of bags, I believe they are. Um, these refill your health a little bit. They also can drop a heart, which is basically the same, but it refills more of your health. And then, like I mentioned before, some of them drop a bomb. Uh, sometimes it's very uh, specific which enemies do it. Other times, when it comes to uh, the later stages, it seems to be random. Uh, maybe there's like... A, you have to defeat so many enemies before it spawns or something like that. But uh, the first time you encounter it would be in stage three. Uh, stage one and two don't have the bomb. And then it would be very specific tied to, uh, to a certain enemy that gives you that bomb. But yeah, speaking of stages, let's uh, dive into those. Um, so first off, you start in the streets. Very normal level, very left to right level. Well, all of them are left to right, to be honest. But uh, there's like no things to jump on, uh, nothing to avoid or anything like that. It's literally go from the left to the right and uh, 
challenge the boss at the end of this course. Um, the enemies that appear here are the normal ninja. These are the enemies you will see mostly throughout the game. Uh, they just come running at you or, or jump at you. Then they try to grab you and they damage you. So you can take care of them easily by just uh, kicking or punching them out of the way. There's also the quote-unquote mini-bosses, but it, it's just guys you have to hit three or four times, I guess. Uh, and these are the Chain Whip dudes. I don't have the actual names, I'm sorry. Uh, but these are just guys st standing stationary, moving a little bit to the left and to the right. Uh, but they use a Chain Whip to, to actually attack you. Very easy to avoid, just hit them a few times. You can actually stun lock them and that will take care of them. But yeah, after a little while, and it really is a little while, these are all very, very short stages, you come across the boss, and uh, in this case, that would be Chainsaw Man. Uh, he kind of looks like a like a bigger Jason uh, holding a chainsaw. Um, you have to wait until he like raises his chainsaw before you can go in and attack him. But uh, once he does that, it's very easy to take care of him. Uh, my suggestion is doing a, a crouch kick, uh, which kind of locks them into place and you can keep uh, spamming the kick button and that will pretty much take care of him very easily. Uh, next up, we go to the dogs. Um, again, normal ninja are very present there. Also, a few chain whip dudes trying to block your path. But there's a new hazard in this stage, and that's flying barrels that come out of uh, apparently nowhere. Um, you can kick them, you can punch them, but it's mostly easier to either wait for them to bounce back on, on top of some crates or just jump over them. So yeah, this uh, level ultra also introduces some quote-unquote platforming where you have to jump on some boxes to uh, to advance in the stage. But again, it's very straightforward. Like all the stages, it's just left to right, you'll get to the boss very soon and then it suddenly becomes clear where those barrels are coming from because you're facing off against Strongman. Uh, Strongman is uh, a fat dude who's throwing barrels at you. That's pretty much it. Um, the best way to deal with him is just to go up against him, let the barrel hit you, and again, like with Chainsaw Man, just do a crouch kick until he uh, he flies off the screen, being dead and all. Um, the thing with this guy is he does like to move backwards a lot, so you have to like readjust yourself and get close to him again so you can actually kick him. But yeah, that takes care of the second level of the game, and you're definitely already playing this game for two minutes now. Wow, <laughs> that's how short it is. Uh, but yeah, next up is the train. Kind of reminds me of like uh, the third level in Fall of the Foot Clan, where you're on top of the the moving uh, trucks. It's kind of rem reminiscent of that. But yeah, on, for this one, you're on top of a train. Again, there's normal ninja coming uh, towards you from from everywhere. A few chain whip dudes again blocking your path, but there's a new guy popping up his head uh, from inside of the uh, train wagon sometimes, and that's the ninja with a gun. Um, you can hit him before he even shoots, but if you wait a little bit he will shoot like two or three bullets at you that you can easily jump over and then go back down. So the best way to take care of them is uh, just rush towards them and, and crouch kick them. Um, after a while one of these will drop a uh, bomb, but I think it's tied to how many of them you defeat. Um, and depending on how you spawn in enemies, you might not uh, get the third one, I believe, that is, uh, that drops the bomb. Um, but yeah, you can always go backwards and, and grab one. And um, that bomb isn't a bad idea to have, actually, uh, especially with the next boss coming up, um, which is called the Napalm Bomber. Um, it's basically, if you have ever played Metal Gear Solid 3, you have, like, the Fury, who has this uh, flamethrower kind of weapon. Um, it's kind of like that he's in a full bodysuit trying to protect him from the Napalm, in this case. Uh, but yeah, he comes towards you and he shoots the the napalm bombs towards you and they create like 
a small pillar of fire that uh, that can easily destroy you if you stay in it. Um, there are no iframes in this game, sadly, so if you stay in it, you uh, will die very quickly. Um, you also fight this guy at the uh, front of the train, with, which has a steam engine, apparently, so steam is coming out. So the first time you come across this guy, it might look like it's really hard to defeat him, uh, but the best way to deal with him is actually to move backwards again so he follows you um, and then use one of the bombs to throw at him this will definitely take down like half of his health and during that time you have the opportunity to move close to him because he can shoot at you and then you can do the old crouch kick again to easily take care of him but yeah this is definitely the hardest boss in the game um and you only have three lives i think maybe two continues as well uh but yeah this might be an issue boss if you don't know what you're doing. Heading into uh, stage four, we have the factory lower floor. Uh, in here you see some new enemies. The, the normal ninjas are gone, I believe, in this one. But now we have these small ninjas that you have to duck for to be able to hit. And they jump towards you and try to grab you. Um, a little bit further in, you also have these... Tr uh, throwing star dudes uh, they just jump around and and throw some uh, ninja stars at you you can deflect the stars by punching or kicking them but it's easier just to like jump over them and then go after uh, the ninja uh, the star thrower uh, himself um, this level also introduces more platforming and more stage hazards um, in here you will find spikes that can hurt you exhaust fans that uh, put out steam to block your path and moving platforms that you have to jump on. Don't be afraid though, it's very simplistic. Uh, so you, you can easily get through it without, without dying. There's not really an issue to be had there. But after a while you come across the boss of this area, which is uh, one of the twin ninjas. I call him Ninja Leader 1. Uh, this is basically a pumped up version of the throwing star dudes. Uh, he also throws stars at you while jumping across the room. And he also has a sword in which, uh, with, which, with, which, 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 with, which, 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 and which. With which he can attack you. I think that's uh, how you say it, yeah. Uh, so he's pretty easy, basically. Um, you could maybe have a bomb on you before you even uh, get to him. If you can hit him before he can jump, that will take down half of his health as well. But otherwise, just jump and punch or jump and kick to uh, to reach him and he will go down very easily. Um, so yeah, let's move on to the factory upper floor, which is stage 5. Again, same enemies, uh, same kind of issues in this stage than in the previous one with the stage hazards but it does introduce a new stage hazard which is a conveyor belt um, which you usually have to take to get through some smaller areas that you can go through and there's an exhaust vent in the way so you have to time it correctly but again very short stage very easy stage to get through and at the end you will come across the second ninja twin or ninja leader too he literally is the same as the previous boss, but uh, he has a different sprite, of course. Uh, but you fight him on a conveyor belt, so it's harder for you to keep your footing. But basically, it's the exact same fight as you did before. A cool way to... Uh, kill this boss if you can is uh, to have a bomb and try to get him to the right side of the conveyor belt because there's also spikes on the sides of the conveyor belts uh, use the bomb to push him backwards into the spikes him taking double damage from it because again there are no iframes for bosses either um, and that will like immediately take care of him i've only been able to do it a few times but it is a really cool way to do it if you can line it up but he does tend to jump over you so that it's pretty useless to try and do that but yeah that takes care of the entire factory so diving into the final stage yep final stage you heard it right um which is the hideout um i think at least it looks like a hideout so um you go 
through a very long haul with all of these small ninja attacking you. Um, better make sure to pick up a bomb because again, it always comes in useful for the boss. But it's a super straightforward level, no hazards, no things to jump on. It's literally just a walk up to uh, Zap Morgan, who is the final boss of this game, as I uh, stated earlier. So this is a hard fight if you get caught. <laughs> Let me just say it like that. So what this guy does is he does this flying kick with both feet in front of him. It, it, it kind of looks like his sprite is just going vertical at that point. Uh, but when that hits you, it hits you for a lot. You can maybe take two hits or two and a half hits and uh, you will be dead. But again, you can kind of cheese him through half of his health bar by using a bomb just as he lands and you throwing it under his feet. That will take care of a lot. But the easiest way to basically defeat him is to go towards him, maybe wait for him to do his flying kick and then just counter with your own kick. So you kick him out of the air. Um, if you can get close enough to him, you can start doing normal kicks. I don't recommend crouch kicks for this one because he will just uh, do the flying kick right over you. Um, that's the easiest way to take care of him. But this is, it's not the hardest boss, but if you get caught by him, you will die very shortly or very quickly. So um, yeah, better make sure to, uh, to brace yourself for that. And yeah, that's the end of the game. Um, I think I talked longer trying to explain what the game is than how long the actual game is. Uh, this is literally a 10 minute game. Um, it also offers two difficulty levels, uh, easy and hard. Hard just means you take more damage basically. Um, so it is definitely harder. Um, it might even be more fun to play it on hard because easy is just so easy. Um, but yeah, this is a game that takes 10 minutes sadly. Um, just like the NES game or, or the other home console versions of Kung Fu Master. Uh, they're, they're just super short, but uh, they're at least fun to play. And if you have like uh, 15 minutes to spare and don't know what to do, just pop in Kung Fu Master and you're good to go. So yeah, let's talk about uh, the game a little bit more because there are actually some regional differences for this game. So there is a difference between Kung Fu Master and Spartan X, uh, even though they are not super important, except for maybe the last one. So um, the health bar uh, in the Japanese version, when you look at it, it is segmented. So you can see five ticks of the health bar, I believe. Whereas in the other versions, you can only see these segments when your health pool drains. So when it goes under a segment, you can actually see there's an outline for that. But for some reason, they changed the sprite, even though the Japanese one looks better in my opinion, uh, but maybe they changed it because it might look like you only have five hits, which is definitely not the case, but uh, it's, it's a, I mean, they could have done it, but I don't know why they did it. Like it bears no difference really. Um, Thomas's sprite, so the main character sprite uh, has been changed in the international version uh, to look more muscular. Uh, for starters, and less like Jackie Chan. Uh, if you look at the uh, Japanese one, it, it definitely, you can definitely see that it's based on Jackie Chan, whereas the uh, international one is just more an American dude, basically more muscular, uh, and makes more sense that he's called Thomas then. Um, when it comes to sprite changers, the twin ninja leaders, uh, they, they also got a sprite change. Um, they basically got slightly more detailed. Uh, like the first guy, you can basically see like the... Like if you take a look at a lot of ninja pictures, they have this mesh kind of thing on their shirts or on their undershirts. It looks more like that in the international version. And the helmet of the second twin, he suddenly has horns or, or wings on it. Uh, why? Again, no idea, but uh, it's cool to see that they use different sprites. But uh, besides that, they don't do anything different. So uh, it's, it's really just a sprite swap. Um, the biggest difference, though, is in the final stage. So in the Japanese version, um, you only 
go up against uh, Zap Morgan. Um, there's no walk towards him with, with the little ninjas or anything. Um, so yeah, for some reason in the international version, they added the long walk towards him. I guess it makes it a little bit more epic than just uh, <laughs> taking two steps and facing up against the boss. And it makes the game like 30 seconds longer. If, oh, or maybe even 10 seconds longer. So um, I'm not sure which one I like best. Uh, and even from a speedrun perspective, both versions are different, so they have different leaderboards, so it doesn't matter. Um, otherwise, of course, the Japanese version would be the fastest. So if you're interested in the speedrun, um, I guess play the Japanese version, unless you want, want the international one. <laughs> it, it really doesn't matter. Uh, it just adds like 10 to 20 seconds or something like that. But yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much all I can say about the actual Kung Fu Master game or Spartan X game. So let's take a closer look at the cover art. So let's first uh, look at the American or yeah, American International one. Um, <laughs> look, it has, a, it has a martial artist on the cover um, who kind of looks like a mix between Liu Kang and, and Bruce Lee. So he doesn't even look like Jackie Chan or Thomas. Um, he's just standing there with one of his Kung Fu stands. Uh, yeah. So, makes sense. It's, it's Kung Fu Master. What doesn't make sense, though, is the background. Um, apparently, he is standing in some desert country with pyramids in the background, um, with oil drills in the background, and with some guy on a capel. Um, <laughs> nothing in this game takes place there, so that doesn't even make sense. But I did read that there's like a joke plot or something where they say that Thomas actually is a camel rider. So maybe they got it from that. I have no idea. It does not make any sense. This is actually the first time I'm looking at the actual background of it. Because um, I'm used to seeing this cover, but I have never, never really looked at the, at the background itself. It, it makes absolutely no sense. Uh, but yeah, anyways, on top of the box, you have Kung Fu Master. For some reason, there's a uh, apostrophe, is that what it's called? Between Kong and Fu. I don't know why. That also makes no sense. This cover just absolutely makes no sense when you look at it closer. But yeah, you can see it's it's a kung fu game because, I mean, the guy is there. Uh, but when you look at the Spartan X cover, so the Japanese cover, that, that one super reminds me of the anime style of... Um, Fist of the North Star, actually. So in the front, you have uh, Thomas, probably, with a very nice 80s hairdo, <laughs> for sure. It kind of looks like he's one of the Double Dragon uh, brothers. Um, and in the background, uh, in green tones, um, you have all the bosses, actually. Except, well, maybe the one in the back is... Uh, zap but um like you have chainsaw guy on the left side behind him is um the fury i already forgot his name napalm bomber uh, you have strongman in the bottom right and then in the bottom top you have it's a sword guy so it could be either one of the two ninja uh and then there's a guy with a whip in the background yeah, that's definitely a whip. So may maybe that is that Zap 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 Brannigan. <laughs> Why am I thinking of, <laughs> of Zap Brannigan? I don't remember his name. Wait, let me let me take a look what it was again. Uh, Zap Morgan. There we go. Yeah, I, I think it's him with a whip, but he doesn't have a whip in the game, at least. Uh, and for some reason, there's like a robotic dragonfly as well in the background. I don't know what that has to do with anything, but it's there. Uh, maybe they just wanted to fill that cor corner up because it was the only one where there was nothing. Uh, but yeah, th they're all silhouettes of uh, of the bosses with Thomas in the foreground actually colored in. And in the background, you just have a city uh, skyline, basically. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I like this cover. It's really cool. I've, I've never seen it before. I would, I would actually like to... Uh, but is 
Hmm, I wonder if the card has this cover. I've never seen the Japanese card now that I think of it. But it, it actually looks cool. And yeah, like I said, it reminds me of the style of uh, Fist of the North Star. Oh. Yeah, all right, those are uh, the covers. Uh, like the American and the European one are the same version. So yeah, a little bit about my uh, thoughts and history with the game. Um, this is another one of those games I had on a multi-card. And even as a young child, like this was super easy to beat. Like it's one of the easiest games on Game Boy. Um, and even so on hard mode, even though it's it's a little bit more difficult, but, but not really. Um, so yeah, I played this whenever I had like 10 to 15 minutes to spare because I knew I could beat it in that time. So that was the perfect one to boot up. Um, it's also one of those games that I picked up to speedrun uh, when I still did that. Uh, this game had no leaderboard, so I decided to make one for it. Um, I don't remember my time. I, I think it's like four minutes something or like a little bit over five. I, I don't remember, I don't have it open right now. Uh, but a lot of people have tried it and, and all times are like in the same region. Um, so it is a really fun one to pick up for sure, especially because it's super short. Um, um, most of it depends on like knowing how to despawn enemies and uh, or spawn. And, and the biggest RNG comes from the boss fights. Um, most of them can... Uh, throw you for a loop here or there. So every time you play it, it's a little bit different. You have to react to some things and hopefully uh, there are the patterns you get are like the ones you want to <laughs> to get a good time uh, but it's super easy to learn and um, I would definitely recommend this to be one of those games that you can dive into if you don't know a lot about speed running and then just want to play something easy to get you going. So. Well, yeah, that's uh, that's literally all I have to say about Kung Fu Master Spartan X. Short episode for a very, very short game. And we will be back right after this song. And with that nice song, I will be taking my leave, yeah. I know I said we will be back, it's only me, but just the the, the we as not in a... whatever. <laughs> Forget what I said, doesn't matter. Um, so yeah, um, if you have any thoughts or suggestions, um, you can always contact all of us, not only me, you can find... Uh, you can contact me or E Bloody Candy or Alex for sure, um, and you can give us your remarks um you can always of course do that by just commenting on the episodes like on soundcloud or on any uh podcast app you might be using um normally we they, they get funneled through to us so we can actually read them or you can even comment on the videos on youtube we do have a youtube channel uh with sadly not a specific url but that's all right because all the information you might need, you can actually find on our website, thisisgameboy.com. Now yeah, the stuff that you can find on there is also our social media. So if, if you wanna get in contact with me or just wanna watch more of my stuff, um, you can also always find me on Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram, all slash Moole, that's M-O-E. L-L-E-U-H. Um, you can find my co-host, the Bloody Candy, also on Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube and Instagram. Uh, his Instagram handle I don't know by heart, but uh, Twitch, YouTube, and Twitter are all e bloody candy, so that's very easy to find out. Of course, uh, you can find our amazing producer Lex, with, who you heard for the very first time last episode. What a reveal, right? Um, you can find her on uh, Twitch as Sprinting Lex, Twitter as Sprinting Lex. Uh, on YouTube as Legs, I believe, and you can also find her on her own website, uh, sprintinglegs.com, where you can find all of her other Game Boy related uh, projects, uh, like the Game Boy Manual Database. No, 
that's where you have to go. Uh, but yeah, like I said, if, if you don't want to type in all these URLs, just go to our website, thisisgameboy.com, where you can find some buttons that will point you in the right direction. Uh, if you want to support the stream, you can do that in a uh, few ways uh, nowadays. Um, the easiest one and the cheapest one is by rating our episodes or liking our episodes or uh, following us, subscribing to our feeds um, because that will get the word out to other people that we exist. And uh, yeah, the more listeners, the better, of course. Uh, but if you do want to Give us some of your money. There are a few ways you can do that as well. Uh, first of all, we have a Patreon, uh, the monthly subscription-based option, uh, where there are two tiers, a $1 one, a $5 one. But of course, you can always choose the amount you want to uh, subscribe for. Yeah, that's, that's how you say that, uh, to become a patron. And there's a few benefits you can have by doing that. Um, you get access to our episodes. No, ep yep, yep. <laughs> you get access to our episode notes. Um, they're fun reads. Um, like if you listen to our previous episode, just to see how they evolved over time, um, it's really cool. And sometimes there's like notes in there that do not appear during the actual episodes and things like that. Or just links of sources that we use that we don't like, as, like specifically mention during the podcast, but that you can check out for yourself. So um, so yeah, from $1 upwards, you, you get access to those. Um, you also get access to some hidden channels in our Discord server, uh, where we have like bloopers and, and stuff like that. Um, the $5 tier uh, gives you a few more benefits, but we are reworking those. Uh, it's it's tied to that secret project I was telling you er earlier about with me and E-Bloody Candy. We'll get back to that when we can. Uh, but yeah, there, there are going to be a few changes for the $5 tier for sure. And that's probably the only tiers that we will have. I don't think we we will have anything more in the future, uh, at least. Um, but yeah, if, if like a monthly subscription thing is not your thing, you can always, of course, just give us a donation through PayPal. We do have a PayPal, it's just uh, uh, paypal.me slash this is Game Boy. So that's a one-time donation, but we do want to give you like some benefits for that as well, of course. So um, if you do that, put in a message. Let us know who you are, if you are on our Discord server or something like that with uh, with a special nickname, uh, so we can give you a few benefits as well, for sure. Because, um, yeah, we, we do want to give you something for supporting us. Uh, if you rather have something physical in return, though, uh, for supporting us, you can always go to merch.thisisgameboy.com, which will take you to our merch store. And um, our limited edition shirt is gone, sadly, but uh, our mug with the normal logo and n nowadays also just our normal logo on a t-shirt are available through there. Um, doesn't matter which country you order from, like uh, we use Teespring, which has, uh, I was gonna say settlements, but that's not the word. I guess factories both in the US and in the EU. So um, like you don't have to wait very long or you don't have to pay extra uh, shipping or things like that. They, they all work from their own country. So uh, that's always a, a good, good way to support us and get something physical in return that you can wear. Um, those things only have our logo on it. It, it doesn't say anything like, oh, you have to listen to them or something like that, or our, our URL or whatever. No, it's, it's just a logo. If somebody comes up to you and asks you, hey, well, what's that shirt? Then you can tell them, of course, and please do. Uh, but yeah, those are the ways to support us. Anyways, I think that's all I can say. Uh, yeah, I think I covered it all. So I'll be heading off now um hope you all have a great rest of the day or evening wherever you are and next time you will be hearing from me and e bloody canny again talking about the game known as chalvo 55 goodbye
Oh god. I did press record. <laughs> I was like, did I just do this without pressing record? Okay, no, great. All right, 